These images are from a trip I took to Marrakesh um, probably about 18 months ago. And I call upon these all of the time. And we, and we were talking about yesterday how things like Chevron can ex experience a trend. It can be trending. It can be popular all of a sudden. But by no means is it, um, is it trendy. It's really classic. And so I love this image because, you know, tile work, this was just in a little boutique where I went in to look at some silver and some other inlaid pieces. And this was the floor in the entry. But how beautiful. And even as an image itself, it, be it could become art on the wall. It could, beca it could become a great photograph that you use as an accessory or a decoration. Um, so, I mean, tiny little things. I, I could have... I mean, I think I probably took 2,000 pictures in Marrakesh, literally. Um, the spices, the little inlaid spoons. This was um, the hotel where I was staying, which was phenomenal. And there's pattern everywhere. Look at the floor, the pattern, if you can see that on the ground, on the, the uh, tile work outside um, at the hotel where I was staying. That could inspire a fabric design. It could be a floor for someone. It could be a pattern on the wall. It could be on the ceiling. It could be anything. And this is the sort of um, process I use to start really studying and seeing beyond the surface of things that I'm experiencing. Kind of like yesterday, a lot of you thought color was just kind of about this deep. And it's really, you know, a, a mile wide and an inch deep. And it's really such a deep topic. We're going to talk about it for three days. The same thing with this, just one trip. And these are just five images uh, from that one trip I went on, and, and there's so much that can be pulled from this, and everything from pattern, color, shape, form, dimension, um, metallics, everything, um, and really fun to look at. So materials, even scents and flavors come to mind when I'm seeing these pictures and, and being reminded of, you know, what that experience was, full sensory experience, yes. Um, I was gonna add, as a photographer, I used to just have my camera with me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I realized after a while I was so burned out, like I had, I was like lacking inspiration. Uh -huh. When I put down my camera for one day and I just went out, I was like, no camera, nothing. Uh -huh. I was able to live in the moment and I felt so much more, like I could take in more. So for me, kind of the camera was a little bit of a barrier for right. me to like. I can see that. Although I would love to have the pictures afterwards, but I had to like let that go for one day mm -hmm. and just experience and, you know, relive it, you know? I can completely relate because as a designer, we do the same things and we spend time in our design workrooms and you think, oh, you know, a lot of people walk into my space and go, I would give anything to spend hours like combing through these fabrics and all of the things that you have. But for me, I'm like you, I have to get out of the office sometimes and look at things, not just going to the design center to see more fabrics, but literally, you know, spending time in a city or in nature or in some other place. And we're going to look at some of those in just a minute. Um, and really looking beyond sort of that surface into the, the next level and dimension of what surrounds us every single day. I agree. That's fantastic. So um, these images, I think you all are going to recognize. Mm -hmm. um, I spent time, I, I've been to San Francisco many times, but I was here last summer with my family. And these were just a few of the images I took while I was here. We were in wine country. Um, we were in the city. And I love the idea of seeing things um, that can inspire you in not the obvious way. So clearly this is the Golden Gate Bridge, but looking at it in as a form or a shape or a pattern or something then more than just the ob obvious, but certainly the color. Um, I loved this orange door um, at the home of a, a winery, the, the owners of a winery. We were in this little tiny kind of private winery and a couple had lived here in this home for oh, a long time. They were in their 80s and still living there, and she had been a landscape architect and horticulturist, so it was really interesting to see what she had done with her own home. And just taking pictures to remember that little, you know, shade of orange that was on the door, yes. I'm wondering if you also ever take items away with you. Like, sometimes I'll be walking and I'll see, like, a leaf, and I just love the shade of orange it is. And Very I just actually, so. like, just pick it up and take yes. it. Very or a stone so. and the pattern in it. My daughter and I a lot of times will go for walks in the neighborhood and I have some pictures I love that she and I walked um, years ago when she was about four. 
so four or five years ago. Um, and we kept that, the items, but I also took photographs of her hand holding a rock. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've used that so many times as an inspiration, you know, like the pattern and the color of the stone mm-hmm. um, that we collected. So totally, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love having the physical item too. And how fun for those things to even go beyond just inspiring you. And maybe they even become an accessory. Maybe they sit on a book on a table in your house and you go, that's the pebble I picked up when I was walking on at the vineyard um, in you know what, such and such year or whatever city. Um, I totally um, am inspired by things. Even this old lantern that was hanging in a tree um, at the under a trellis at a vineyard and I loved the patina and that shade of green. Um, it was so much fun to think about how that, it's almost a spearmint kind of green, but it was just a really old um, lantern that had been weathered for years. And so I'm walking around sort of in my own little world because my family's there tasting the wine that's amazing. And I'm, you know, taking pictures of doors and lanterns. And they're used to me now uh, doing this strange thing. But it's really where true inspiration is found because everybody else is seeing the obvious things that we're seeing. And that doesn't really often become a very unique source of inspiration. It's when you really look with that critical eye, kind of like you're saying, you even had to put your camera down to see what was really beyond uh, and experience the dimension of it. And sometimes even things like, I love this picture um, with the trolley in San Francisco, but the shade, the hazy shade, it almost looks like it's a black and white photograph, but it's not, it's just the time of day that it was taken. So um, really interesting things, how, how things look even different on camera and in a photograph than they ex- did in real life, and each of those might become a source of inspiration for you. Um, But even just in San Francisco, besides architecture, um, certainly going to museums and looking at um, hospitality like restaurants and hotels and seeing what other people have done in cities is really inspiring and fun to me. And it depends on what city, I mean, what season you're there. You can have totally different inspiration. Like my mom and I love to come to San Francisco and go to Napa in late summer because it's heirloom tomato season, which is our favorite food on earth. And we, I mean, we sometimes just dream of the taste of those tomatoes and go, could we ship some home? Is there anybody that can go to the store for us? So now I know several people, I'm going to send y'all up to Napa to be shipping me heirloom tomatoes. But there's something that's so inspirational about that and the color of even food. Think about, you know, green and red and yellow tomatoes on a plate. It can really be an inspiration for an interior. It may sound silly and may sound sort of like we're splitting hairs to other people, but it's not. It's truly what can help create a unique space or home.